Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, we hear on this Sunday very inspiring texts. The first reading, Isaiah chapter 50, is a text which stands as the basis for the prophetic understanding of Messiah. It's the third of the so-called four servant songs of Isaiah. The second reading is from James chapter 2 verse 14 to 18. He says that a faith which does not act through love is a dead one. The gospel passage Mark chapter 8 verses 27 to 35 constitutes almost the center point of Mark's gospel. We shall focus our attention to the gospel pericop. The gospel passage progresses in four steps. At first there comes the question of who Jesus is and Peter's response verses 27 to 30. Second, Jesus tells about the nature of his messiahship verse 31. Third, Peter refuses to accept Jesus concept of messiahship verses 32 to 33. Fourth, Jesus calls the crowd together with the disciples and tells them about the cost of discipleship verses 34 and 35 now the first step jesus inquires from the disciples what the general public thinks about him the people see in him a prophet a prophet is one who warns the people and teaches the people of god's ways they consider jesus as a prophet just one among the prophets Then the opinion of the disciples is inquired. In the understanding of the disciples, Jesus is someone more than a prophet as presented in the response of Peter. He is the Messiah. He is the anointed one of God, the last envoy of God. It's through him that salvation is made available to men and women. His deeds and words so far have proved it. He was able to feed the people. He was having concern for them. and he was teaching them he was creating communion among the people thus the opinion of the disciples about jesus is a correct one it's true jesus is the messiah therefore for us who is jesus is he simply a great man a liberator someone who has great and enchanting plans about people just that is it enough to accept the thoughts and plans of jesus it's not enough Besides all this the person of Jesus has to be accepted in its fullness the person of Jesus becomes the center point it's not enough to accept one or the other aspect of Jesus Jesus should be accepted as the one and only person who puts you directly in contact with God Jesus can only be conceived in terms of his definite relationship with God which will also eventually give you a definite relationship with God. If so, in the second step, Jesus tells the disciples of the nature of his messiahship. Jesus the Messiah, the last in boy of God, will not be accepted by the chief priests and the elders of the people. They will act against him violently. At he will not react in the same way as they do. But through his resurrection, the power of God will be revealed and his concept of messiahship will be vindicated now in the third step peter and his companions refused to accept jesus concept of messiahship peter had confessed jesus as the messiah as his pock representing the disciples now peter takes jesus aside and disagrees with jesus relating to his understanding of messiahship Peter is not ready to accept a suffering and dying messiah. He had expected a triumphant and glorious messiah. This exactly is a representation of human nature which does not accept suffering and pain. The human persons by their very nature refuses to accept and follow the will of God. The moment that men and women are ready to accept the will of God they will also be able to accept suffering and pain too in their lives men and women are to be led by the will of God not just by their whims and fancies not by the mere ruminations of the human mind jesus told peter therefore get behind me satan 
you are thinking not as god does but as human beings do by these words jesus was demanding from the part of the disciples a firmness of decision a choice of life and commitment they are requested to act in accordance with the ways of god ways of god and the will of god are to guide them in the fourth or the last step jesus calls the crowd together with his disciples but in his exhortation he leaves the choice or decision to their freedom or liberty he says if anyone wishes to come after me jesus does not constrain anyone to go after him it's a person's free choice one can accept or reject the invitation of jesus at to reject the invitation has serious consequences it has to be borne in mind that rejection of the invitation means the rejection of the offer of salvation hence the invitation of jesus has to be given serious consideration or deliberation anyone who wishes to go after jesus should take up his or her cross and follow him one's own cross means one's own troubles sorrows and difficulties one who follows jesus cannot always follow one's own inclinations desires and aspirations he or she has to assume the dimensions of jesus which may turn out to be difficult such a person should be related to jesus without any break it's only in relationship with jesus there will be life in that person which will eventually lead to salvation that's why jesus says whoever loses his life for my sake and that of the gospel will save it that means jesus will then constitute the central focus of one's life jesus becomes the basic criterion in one's life the price or cost of such a life will be very great dear friends let's listen to jesus invitation let's place jesus at the center of our life by doing so we will be able to get ready to accept suffering and pain in our life but there will be a change of attitude and viewpoint in accepting suffering and pain jesus will become the basic criterion of our life and that will be the fullness of life which is salvation amen